Good evening everybody. Uh, I wanted to make a short video on um, making electrical poles and telephone poles. Um, I am kind of doing it on the cheap. so Because <laughs> cheap's always good in this hobby because we always uh, tend to spend a lot of money. So maybe your, your wives and girlfriends won't be so... Uh, or husbands as the case may be so for some of you. Uh, won't be so uh, loath to let you not do this <laughs> or to do it. So um, I am going to, uh, what I did is I ordered off of Amazon um, <clears throat> some of these wooden dowels. These are six inch wooden dowels. Uh, for my electrical poles I'm using the eighth inch ones. So that's uh, close to a foot in diameter which is about right for, um, you know, a light pole. Now for the um, telephone poles that uh, if, you're, if you're running in an older era, for the telephone poles, you want to um, use uh, something a little bit thicker. So I've got 3 16 for those, and the 3 16 inch poles are... Uh, close to about 16 inches in diameter. So you can either go up a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, but um, it's good to use different diameter poles, you know, mix it up. Uh, looks a little more prototypical that way. Uh, so I ordered these, you can order a pack of 50 off of Amazon and they're about nine or ten dollars. And they're wooden, so that makes, that makes it even better because they look like wood because they are wood. So what I did, though, is I got, uh, if you remember, at least in my era, um, poles were always uh, soaked in creosote, and that's what preserved them. Uh, you don't see creosote poles as much anymore. You, you see some still, uh, and of course railroad ties are creosote. So, um, but now nowadays you see more uh, grayish, greenish color uh, that... Uh, stuff they use to treat uh, modern telephone poles uh, and you can buy different colors of stain to replicate that you know so what I did is I went and bought two stains I bought red mahogany and ebony okay or you could use walnut if you wanted to uh, because it's dark it's a uh, very very dark brown uh, and I'm just gonna take I've got a, a little tray here that I stole from the kitchen uh, glad when they're disposable you can get them at the grocery store and all I'm going to do is drop my poles in here and let them soak now I'm going to let some of them soak longer than other ones and the reason that is because you want some a little bit lighter and some a little bit darker you don't want them all being an even color um, and I see these are uh, these are a little bit too black so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, my mahogany and pour it in there. Uh, if I can find my screwdriver that I had used to there it is that I'd used to pry it open originally. So I'm going to I had poured in a whole can of ebony and a half can of mahogany, but I think I'm going to think I'm going to use the whole can of each. So I've got one small can of ebony and one small of mahogany and I will do that and I'm wearing a glove because I don't want to get this stain all over me um, so some of them and you can use different colors if you find that this isn't the exact right color you need uh, you can try uh, different colors so um, I think leaving them in just you don't want to leave them in too short a time because the stain won't soak into the wood. So I'm going to try, you know, just a few minutes of leaving them in here and uh, try about five minutes for some of them and then 10 minutes for others and 15 minutes for others. And then that way I'll get a good variation in color. And I'm just going to move them around. Uh, make sure the two different colors of stain really work into the wood. Uh, if you know creosote, sometimes it's black, but it's also got that reddish brown tint to it. So um, I want to make sure 
I want to make sure I get that reddish brown tint in there as well. And I might have to do it over because the mahogany might be too over, or I'm sorry, the, um, the ebony might be too overwhelming. But if I do, then it's easy. You just, uh, you just re-soak them in another stain. Uh, but like I said, I don't want to leave them in here too long, but I do want to leave them in here long enough so that the wood absorbs the stain. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. So it's been about five minutes, and so I'm going to take uh, some amount. Of course, with stain, what you want to do is uh, wipe them off, and this is just going to make some a little lighter. I think I think what I would have done differently, uh, since I'm seeing them now, is I would have gone with a full can of red mahogany and a half a can of the ebony. Um, the ebony is just a little overwhelming, so um, that's what I'm going to do differently next time if I need some more. So what I'm going to do is take about a third of them and pull them out and wipe them off, and that will give me um, that'll give me some that are worn more worn down more than others. Um, and these six inch poles are perfect height. Uh, they're perfect enough where you can stick them in the ground and still have enough height left over. You know, stick them into your foam or whatever you're using as ground and have enough left over for, uh, you know, the correct height. So you can see as I'm wiping off the stain, the, uh, it's, it's leaving, uh, leaving some of the wood. And that's what I want. Uh, some of them are going to be like that. Some of them uh, are going to be a little thicker with uh, creosote, and some of them are going to be like they're brand new. So I don't want to, but I don't want to make them all look the same. That's the uh, that's the key here. Make them uh, make them look different, um, different shades, and you can either you can even. Uh, you know, do different shades of, of, of stain if you want to. But these, this is just a good cheap way of making uh, electric poles. And like I say, these are the 1 8 inch dowels, which is close to, close to a foot in diameter. Um, for, the, uh, for the telephone poles that run a long railroad track you want to go with a little bit uh, larger in diameter pole like a 3 16 which is about close to 16 inches in diameter and once again I ordered just ordered them on Amazon you know you get a bag of 50 of them for nine or ten bucks and soaking them in stain you just get to uh, you know they it does them pretty quickly you don't have to sit there and paint each one uh, and stain makes them look like they're wood instead of like they're painted. I say if some of them just leave a little bit longer and some of them leave a little bit shorter time. So as soon as I finish these I will wait about um, wait about five more minutes and do some more and then I'll come back about five minutes after that and show you some more. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes now. I uh, did my 5 minute ones. Now, uh, now I'm going to do some of my 10 minute ones and see how they're coming out. So basically in stain, the longer you let it soak in, the, uh, the more it's going to color the wood. Uh, you know, if, they're doing a, if you're doing a table, they recommend, I think you leave it in there about 15 minutes. Leave, brush the stain on, leave it on 15 minutes. So, um, but I did my five minute selection and now I'm doing my 10 minutes. So, and two, depending on the grain of the wood is, it's some's gonna soak in more and some less. So, uh, just, re just remember that. And that's good because then you get a variation. So, and if you take a little bit longer at this point at the 10 minute mark, then, uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to stop 
and wait another five minutes. So, like I said, the one thing I would have changed is I would have done uh, a whole can of red mahogany and a half a can of the ebony because the ebony is very overwhelming. Or you could get some um, some stain for um, I'm sorry, I just I said the name of the wood earlier and I forgot it now. <laughs> That's what happens when you get old. So I'll think of it in a minute though. Walnut, that's what I was trying to think of. Some walnut stain and mix a little bit, uh, mix that the other way. Do a full can of walnut to a half a can of red mahogany because the walnut's not quite as dark as the ebony is. And two, the, the, the more you leave on and don't wipe off, the more, uh, uh, the more darker the wood will be, too. So just remember that as well. And I'm just using a paper towel to wipe it off. But I'll go back in just a minute and show you some of the first ones I did so you can see how they look. Uh, because it, it doesn't take this stain very long to dry, at least dry to the touch. So even though it is oil stain. And then uh, when I film part two of this, uh, I'll show you how to make the cross arms. Um, I haven't quite decided yet on how I'm going to do the cross arms for the uh, electric poles. Um, if I want to go with some commercially made ones or make my own. So as soon as I decide that for myself, then I will um, I will actually do part two of making utility poles. Which is the general term, I guess, would be a utility pole. So just remember the... Uh, Electrical poles that you see on the, along the streets around your neighborhood are a little bit smaller in diameter than the um, than the communication poles that you would see running alongside of railroad tracks. So, uh, and like I said, what I'm using is what's equivalent to about a foot in diameter for my electric poles and uh, about 16 inch in diameter for my uh, my communication poles along the railroad track so and that's the difference between a 1 8 inch dowel and a 3 16 all right yeah they're coming out a little bit darker All right, I'll be back in just a second to, to finish this video up. Okay, so you can see now I've got all of them done. I did, it took me less than a half hour to do about 60 is what I have there. Um, I, had, uh, I had two packages of 50, so that's 100. Um, I had done some earlier. These I had done with actually stained pens. Which you might want to do that uh, just to give some more variety in, in what you're doing. Uh, variety in color, just like on anything else, uh, is going to be the key to making it look uh, more realistic. So uh, here's some I just did with some stained pens. And then here's the ones, of course, I did uh, soaking them in the stain. So you can see the... Uh, how varied the colors are, you know, and how much uh, the stain soaked into some, like uh, like this one here um, that I'm pointing to, versus you know one like this where uh, where it's where it's a lot lighter. So um, <clears throat> that uh, it's going to give you a good diversity of color. Here when you do this, when you soak them in, and uh, like I said, it's done very cheaply and uh, really very quickly. So just remember to wear gloves when you do it because this stain makes a mess. So uh, 
But anyway, that's all I have for part one of making utility poles. So uh, stay tuned for part two. I don't know when I'll, when I'll be able to do that, but uh, hopefully it won't be too long. Thanks, and have a good evening.